dark. Greetings, everyone. This is Michelle, the mess half of Sugary Mess, bringing you to my fortune telling and tarot collection. We've had a few inquiries about this collection, so I'm going to do my very best to explain to you what I have. Disclaimer, I am in no way an expert on these items. These are just some of my favorite things to collect, and I'm going to do my very best to explain what I have in my collection based on my own research. So if you want to start collecting these items, feel free to start doing your own research. I may be able to answer some questions if you want to drop them in the comments, but as I mentioned, I am not an expert and by no means is the information I'm going to give fact. So just keep that in mind. This is all for fun. All right, guys, let's jump in. So Susan and I have always been really interested in tarot. In fact, in our early 20s, Susan and I both bought some tarot decks and taught ourselves how to use them. And I actually stuck with it. And in my early 30s, I'd say, I started doing some parties and got quite good at reading the cards. But I never really took the time to do research on the deeper meaning of the symbolism behind the decks until recently. And what I discovered is really quite interesting. And there may be even a tie to why your grandma might appreciate tarot. Let me tell you about it. Tarot was developed in Italy in the 15th century, and at that time, it was known as a parlor game called Taracci. Now, I apologize for those Italian viewers. I'm sure I just butchered that name. But as far as I understand, is, and if my memory serves me correct, that's spelled T-A-R-O-C-C-H-I. And it wasn't until the game moved throughout Europe and hit France in about the 17th century that the name changed to tarot as we know it today. Now, this game continued to be played by the wealthiest citizens and the cards were actually individually hand painted. So as you can imagine, you had to be a person of means to own such an exquisitely hand painted game. Because as you can see by some of my examples here, the cards are very detailed with bright, vibrant colors, and the designs are just amazing. And I just have a few examples here to show you. Now, all decks are made up of two different, two different categories. There are 78 cards total. One grouping is the 56 cards composing the minor arcana, and then there are an additional 22 cards featuring the major arcana. Now, the minor arcana include the four suits, and those include wands, cups, swords, and coins. And the major arcana, these cards represent an allegory of your life or a journey of your life. And remember I made a mention of grandma earlier and how she might be familiar with tarot? Well, it turns out that back in those old days, tarot was really just a glorified version of bridge. Do you see the similarities? The face cards and the suit cards? It's really just a regular old deck of cards, albeit with extra cards in it. That's it. That's really the only difference. And that's how it was played back then as well. It wasn't until much, much later that historians and occultists actually infused their own meanings into the cards that the perception of tarot started to change. So to show you a little more detail in the breakup between the major and minor arcana cards, I'm going to show you the difference. So remember how I compared the tarot deck to a regular deck of playing cards and comparing them by saying that 
in a regular deck of cards you have diamonds hearts spades and clubs well in a tarot deck you have swords wands coins and cups and then you also have your king of cups you would have queen of swords knight of cups page of wands etc and that makes up the minor arcana which is the 56 cards sorry and then your ma your major arcana those are the face cards those are the allegorical cards which make up the story or the hidden meaning and the whole purpose of tarot is to find out the hidden meaning so if you have a question you're having a problem you want to find out the answer to you would lay out these cards and you would have a question in mind and the person reading your cards would use the layout and tell you the meaning behind these cards and hopefully divine for you the answer that you're looking for now these cards have all different meanings and some of them, like this deck, tell you the meaning right on the card for you, which makes it really, really easy. So the Fallen Tower may just mean a sudden change, or perhaps an abandonment of past relationships, or an end of a long friendship. The Chariot means you may need some perseverance, put in a major effort. There could be some trouble or, or adversity coming your way. Or the fool may mean that there's the beginning of a new adventure coming, or perhaps a new school or a new job coming your way. Now, as I mentioned earlier, tarot was never really meant to be used as anything other than a fun parlor game or an early form of bridge. But occultists, people involved in witchcraft and spiritualism, they kind of made it their own and they gave a lot of the hidden meaning to tarot and unfortunately gave it a bad reputation and many people to this day are afraid of tarot just like they're afraid of all the various talking boards out there which is probably due to movies like the exorcist now to make tarot and cards like tarot like regular fortune telling cards more palatable for the american audience they made the drawings and illustrations a little more basic and a little more friendly and they just really dumbed it down for lack of better words into just really simple games you would basically lay your cards out in a really simple format and just ask silly questions like, am I gonna get married? Am I gonna have kids? Here's the bride card. Am I gonna have children? Am I gonna go on a trip? There's a train. Am I gonna fall in love? and so on and so forth. So while these may be considered a kind of sort of tarot, they really are just called fortune telling cards because the American publishers of these cards really did not want to associate with the tarot um, name at that time they wanted to sell these cards and while they did put a lot of time and effort into these illustrations you could see that there is a huge difference in the look the color and the feel of these cards and the other ones that i showed you earlier you don't see anything like that in these new cards do you now, I'm not exactly sure when tarot made it to the United States, but I want to say it was in the early 20th century. And I know the Fox sisters from Upper New York used tarot along with talking boards, magic slates, and other devices to trick 
the upper class in New York to believe they were talking and communicating with their past relatives. And I believe because of their widespread effect on the population of New York and word spread fast back then, I'm not sure how, but it did, that some publishers in the East Coast decided to take advantage of the popularity of spiritualism and they started making their own types of tarot and fortune telling decks. They understood that there was money to be made by convincing people they could divine their own futures by seeking the guidance of various fortune telling decks and devices. Now, these, I'm sure, were seen as an easy money grab, and lots of different styles were made, and I showed you a, a deck just a few seconds ago, and here's another style. Now, if you look closely, you will see similarities to tarot, although they sure didn't call them tarot. Now, if you ask me, luck seems really similar to the Wheel of Fortune, and I would even guess that change is like the fool card because they both mean the beginning of a new adventure. And I would say that's what change means. It's the beginning of something new, right? You're changing. So leave it up to Americans to water down something with a really rich and interesting history to make a quick buck. But you can't deny that tarot is a beautiful art with amazing illustrations, a super interesting history. There's something out there for everyone. I certainly don't know all there is to know about it, but I'm really proud of my very tiny but mighty collection. And if you'd like to know more or have any questions, I'll do my very, very best to answer. And if you'd like to learn more or learn about the beginnings of the Magic 8-Ball and how the first one was made with molasses, then drop it in the comments and say, tell us more about the molasses at Magic 8-Ball, <laughs> and I'll be happy to tell you. Thanks for watching. Please tell your friends about our channel and subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon.